Thank you for listening to this episode of the Tucumcari New Mexico Area News Podcast, a roundup of what's newsworthy and what's going on in the Quake County area. Like our page on Facebook and join in on the discussion at the Tucumcari New Mexico Area News Discussion page. And now, here is your host, Gordon Runyon. Thank you, thank you. This is your host, Gordon Runyon, and we are here for the Tucumcari New Mexico Area News for the week beginning with Monday the 12th, Veterans Day. Veterans Day. And so we hope you have a good one. Maybe you got the extra day off. That'll be good. What we have on tap for this first inaugural edition of the Tucumcari Area Podcast. No, it's the I, I Tucum missed a couple Carrier, of words there. Tucumcari, New, New Mexico Area, Area News Podcast. News. Yeah. That's a mouthful. Yeah, that just rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? Yep, in big square chunks. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about what we're going to do. We're going to have the weather forecast for the week. We're going to have our verse of the day. We've got some news headlines from last week. And, well, from the last couple of weeks. And then in the final segment, we will... Uh, try to think together about how to think about all these things from a biblical standpoint. Does that sound all right to you? It sounds like uh, quite a time. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let's get on to this week's weather forecast. Looking ahead at all the days coming up for the next week. Looks like Monday the 12th is going to be the coldest day So far it says the high of 37 and the low of 23. Wow. Uh, It warms up into the 40s on Tuesday, but overnight the low there drops all the way to 20. The warmest day of the week should be Thursday, scheduled for 60 degrees. And then we should have 50s the rest of the week with lows just above freezing. Our best chances for precipitation are 45% on Monday and zero the rest of the week. I even saw it could be snow on Monday. That might be the precipitation. (laughs) So. You ready for snow? Uh, sure. (laughs) (laughs) Ready or not? Yep. All right, well, our verse of the day is from... Exodus in chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And our week's forecast and our verse of the day has been brought to you by Emmanuel Baptist Church. Oh, nice. They're good people. Uh, Well, that's what I hear. (laughs) So uh, I notice it's a verse of the day. Are you going to put up a new verse every day? Day of the week next week, or is that the verse of the week? No. See, when we're not podcasting, y'all got to find your own verse of the day. <laughs> I just I uh, wanted to, you know, clarify for my own understanding <laughs> if there would be uh, a new verse. Maybe if you just go to the Facebook page, there will be a new verse there. Uh, well, maybe. <laughs> we'll see how that works. <laughs> well, then you really should say verse of the week. Yeah, but I want people to read more than just that. Well, it's our verse. Okay, it's the week. verse of the podcast. Week. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't introduced you. Oh, that's right. You are my wife, Joyce. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Low these many, many years. <laughs> like 60 years. <laughs> Uh, Anyway, so I'm here with my wife, Joyce. want to recount what we kind of look at as being some of the top stories from the last couple of weeks in Tucumcari and the area. Maybe one of the big ones was we got a new city commissioner appointed. That's right. To replace uh, Robert Lumpkin after his untimely death. And our new city commissioner is... Chris Arias. That's right. I know that kid. Man, I know that kid too. He's not much of a kid anymore. They all grow up. Man, it makes me old. (laughs) 
Well, that doesn't make me old. It makes me feel really old. Well, it's a little of both. <clears throat> and so, uh, congratulations to Chris. He was chosen out of a field of three, and we trust that he will do a good job there. Uh, another headline that recently came across is that the county commission in Lee County has apparently endorsed Tucumcari for the Racino. They've sent their uh, recommendation to the I think it's called the New Mexico Racing Commission. Commission. Yeah, I think that's right. And so uh, that sounds like a big deal. I'm not sure how much the Racing what Commission sway they cares have. Yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah. But couldn't hurt, I guess, if you're if you're on the side of bringing in the Racino, it couldn't hurt. And they specifically say we'd be a better place to put it than Clovis. And our last kind of interesting bit of news that we want to mention today is that O'Reilly Auto Parts is apparently officially coming to Tucumcari and building a retail store mm -hmm. at least here in town. Well, they've got a big piece of property, so well, I don't do. know what all they're going to do with that, but... They do. I was at the city commission meeting when... Commissioner Duplantis said during the commissioner's items section of the meeting, he made it official that he can say for sure that they are, in fact, going to be here. Mm -hmm. He didn't give a timetable. I already had somebody asking me, when can I put in a job application? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and none of, that, none of that was said. And so... Really, that's about all uh, Todd Duplantis had to say is that it's not a rumor. It's really happening. And yeah. so we are getting a new store. Kind of the exciting thing about that for Tucumcari is that this is a little bit different than having just someone in town start up a, a business and yeah, hope it have flies. a franchise group come in. And... Because this is a corporation and it's not, apparently it's not, I ask, it's not a franchise. It's the corporation coming to mm. do this, which means that. If they want to put a store here, they're going to put a store here. Yeah. And it's not going to, if they want it to keep going, it's going to keep going. And yeah. So. Well, and I think the interesting thing with that is that the property that they purchased is not a retail type of property. Not right now. They yeah, purchased so. the land, everything having to do with the old, I'm already calling it the old, because it's not this anymore, but the formerly titled Cactus RV mm -hmm. Park. It's located at 1316 East Tucumcari Boulevard. Or is that Route 66? Yeah, East Route 66. <laughs> They're equivalent terms. <laughs> and so right across the street from Dickinson Implement. And if you have looked at that place, it's just all trees and flat land. There's... A, a building where they had the office for the RV park. And maybe well, the, there's some outside, like, rooms. There's some buildings in back. and There's yeah. some rooms along the outside. Because it used to be a hotel. Yeah, apparently that's and, six acres. Which is surprising. I didn't realize it was that much property. Oh, it, I believe it goes... Uh, it goes pretty far back. Yeah, it goes yeah. quite a ways back. And so, that is... <laughs> Extremely interesting, which means, and I know people are already speculating, there hasn't been any confirmed anything, but you don't need six acres to build a retail auto parts store. Mm -hmm. And so it's led to some speculation that there may be more in the works. Well, I think it was a really smart move on behalf of O'Reilly to go in and uh, get something that may be a little bit depressed that's not going to be maybe as high right. dollar Buy market. low, sell high. Yeah, you know, because yeah. we do have some other storefront properties where the that they're rented or suddenly they're an extreme, they they're a, their value goes up a lot because somebody's interested in purchasing it. So, um that's really thinking outside of the box, saying, you know, we'll just buy this property and we'll do what we want to with it. And not necessarily looking at, I want to 
step into a building that's already ready and maybe have to do some repairs. So yeah, and as I was, I was talking to somebody at the last city commission meeting about this and kind of talking off the record. But apparently O'Reilly's been interested in coming to Tucum Carry for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And their initial effort to come here, they backed off because they apparently met some locals at one of the local fast food places. Mm -hmm. And they overheard conversations between locals talking about how things have really gone downhill and Tucum Carry's dying and that sort of thing. And and so talking to those locals, overhearing that, and, and then actually speaking to them and oh. speaking to more mm -hmm. who had the same opinion, they kind of said, well, maybe this isn't the right place for us. And, and then somehow, and I don't know the somehow, I don't know what that is, but somehow they came back and there were people here who were able to talk them into no, come, let's, let's see, let me show you around and show you what's going on. And, and apparently that was all it took. And so I don't know, like I say, there's no timetable given officially. Yeah. But that has the potential to be kind of a nice thing for to come carry. Maybe not a ton of jobs, but interesting to see new business starting up here. Yes, it's always good to have new businesses instead of businesses not being here. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so the question then becomes, if these are the big stories, how should specifically a Christian person think about these things? And that's what we want to talk about in the next segment. And we're going to have a little break here as we hear a message from my friend Jason Sanchez about the Reconstructionist Radio Network and... When we come back, we're going to try to talk about these headlines and specifically ask, what does the Bible have to say about these things? Or is there a Christian way to look at these headlines and what's going on here? And so that'll be next. Stay tuned. The Reconstructionist Radio Podcast Network brings to you a complete lineup of podcasts where you will hear practical and tactical theology. Our desire is not simply that you consume our shows, but that you also live out your faith in every area of life. We can talk all day long about these things, but if we fail to put them into practice, then we fail as ambassadors of Jesus Christ, our King. Subscribe now to your favorite Reconstructionist Radio Podcast Network shows, or you can subscribe to the Reconstructionist Radio Master Feed, where all of the content we produce including the audiobooks and audio articles, will pop up as soon as they are available. And don't forget to visit ReconstructionistRadio.com to volunteer as a narrator or to partner with this ministry financially. May the Holy Spirit stir you into action for Christ and His Kingdom. And we're back to Carry New Mexico Area News Podcast. That's right. I'm your host, Gordon Runyon, and this lovely lady on the right-hand side of your podcast listening <laughs> device, left hand. Did yeah. I say left or right? You said right. Oh, you're actually on the left. I wondered. <laughs> but it's hard for me to know sometimes. This young lady. <laughs> is directionally challenged. <laughs> this is my wife, Joyce. Keeps me honest. Let's talk about some of these things. Chris Arias has become the new city commissioner. Mm -hmm. You and I have known this young man for a very long time. He was in the 4-H club that we were leaders in. You're mm. still a very yeah. active leader there. And he was in 4-H with our girls when they were growing up and going through it. Mm -hmm. And what he is now is pretty much exactly what he was back then in terms of being willing to do a lot of hard work, but yeah. also being uh, extremely jovial and outgoing and humorous. Uh, uh, have I ever seen him not joking around or 
I mean, <laughs> it seems to me he's always he's always just been he's very good natured, the good natured guy that he is. Yeah. And before he was chosen, the candidates to replace Mr. Lumpkin were asked some questions, and they were things like, "Why do you want to be the city commissioner?" Yeah. What do you think the city commission should do and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. And and I suggested that those sorts of questions are not terribly helpful and that really Christians need to get to where we're asking everybody running for office deeper questions such as what is government supposed to be doing in the first place? Mm -hmm. You know, and... Whatever your answer is to that, I want to know how you know that. And another question is, is it possible for government to pass laws that are fundamentally unjust? Can government do bad things by law? Surely they can't. Well, you would think that. <laughs> but then the question then is, and how would you know? Mm -hmm. How do you know when the government is doing something bad? And and then what is the citizen's responsibility in that situation? And what is the city commissioner's responsibility? What if, what if the state of New Mexico came up with some kind of rule that they wanted municipalities to enforce, say, like gun confiscation or something like that, and now... It's upon it's put upon the local governments to take guns away from everybody. What I want to know is, as a city commissioner, what do you think your responsibility is if somebody higher up in the system demands something that is unjust? And how would you know yeah, if it is unjust? How can unjust? you recognize that? Yeah. And so what's the answer? I, I believe the Bible is pretty clear that Christians are supposed to get their sense of right and wrong and their definition, definitions of justice from the law of God contained in both the Old and New Testament. Mm -hmm. We believe that God has revealed what real justice looks like and it's found in the law. Mm -hmm. And I'm convinced by reading places like Deuteronomy chapter 17, especially the last verse there, uh, and Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 7, I'm convinced that the Bible universally and consistently teaches the fact that government is held responsible by God to do God's, to, to operate according to God's definitions of righteousness. The last verse of Deuteronomy 17 I mentioned, it's talking about responsibilities of the king. And one of the things the king was supposed to do is write out his own copy of the law. Mm -hmm. And he was supposed to study it every day. And one of his responsibilities was that the reason he's studying it is so he can learn not to deviate from it. Mm -hmm. He's not allowed. Yeah. And what do our governments want to do? Well, Whatever they they, want. you can't chain them down. <laughs> yeah. You can't restrain them at all. <laughs> and so the biblical version of government is, the, is that the king is held responsible to do what God has commanded and no more and, and no less. He's mm -hmm. not allowed to turn to the right or to the left. And then Romans chapter 13 verses 1 through 7 comes along and says that God instituted human governments with a particular mission, and it's very narrow. Yeah. It's extremely narrow. The mission is to restrain those who do public acts of evil. And that is it. There's yeah. nothing else the government should be involved in other than, uh, other than like I say, punishing, restraining, those who are actually committing crimes. Yeah. And we've just gone so far away from that. That used to be the American idea of what government was supposed to do. Way back when, that's what everybody thought. But it's like that 
picture of the frog boiling in the water. We've just yeah. gradually had this thing where the government does more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And it does these things with this veneer and with this uh, outward attitude and advertisement that says, we're doing this for the public good. Yeah. We're helping the <laughs> children or... yeah. We're helping over here. We're helping poor people, or we're doing this and doing that. We're providing all these services. We're keeping you safe, and we're yeah, keeping you healthy, absolutely. and we're keeping you fed. And <laughs> right, and we'll we're going you to in do, bed. <laughs> we're going to do all these things for you because we're good people that way. Mm -hmm. And by the way, in order for us to do all these good things, we're going to need a lot of money, and that's going to come from you. And so, my my wish for Christian citizens is that we would understand God's vision, his mission for human governments. And that mission, like I say, is very small. Punish crime. Stop crime, punish it. Yeah. Our government today is even in the has even gone into the business of stopping crime before it happens. You know, we'll profile you and determine whether or not you're likely to commit crimes and Well, only some special people <laughs> <laughs> right and only towards some specifics depending on what what the color of your skin is yeah. or what ethnic group you belong to will treat you a certain way because we think it's likely you might do something bad yeah and none of that is biblical at all the government has a very narrow job and what does the government do in Tucumcari it does everything in Tucumcari and we wonder why our government is always short on funds. Why we can't pay to have potholes fixed and stuff like yeah. that. Well, I don't even think the government should be fixing potholes. But if they're going to take that as one of their jobs and, and then complain that they don't have enough money to fix the roads that they build and, and that they say they're responsible to maintain, now they can't do this. And why? Because they're doing everything else that God told no government anywhere to do. Yeah. Providing housing, providing health care, providing education. None of that. Government isn't supposed to do a single one of those things. But then some people might say, well, then what should we do? Right, exactly. <laughs> what do we do if the government doesn't do these things? Well, what what did we do when we became the greatest nation on God's green earth? You know, how about we go back to that? You want to make America great again? Make the government less again. Get the government back within its boundaries. And we'll see the American people do the things that we've always done. Because we've got this Christian heritage and we understand right from wrong, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. Free us up. Let us keep our money and do with it what we want. You know what we wind up doing? We wind up forming charities. We, want, we wind up building hospitals that serve people for free. That's, that's how hospitals started. Hospitals didn't start by charging people. They were started by churches. Look around at all the hospitals. What do you have? You have Baptist St. Anthony's and St. Jude's this and mm -hmm. St. Christopher's this. and It's all, those names didn't get applied recently, you know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, so mm -hmm. what would we do? Well, we would begin to take care of our own is what we would do, which coincidentally is exactly what the Bible tells us we should be doing. Yes doesn't tell the government to go feed the poor or clothe those who are naked or or shelter those who are homeless. Government is never told to do that. That's you and me. And that's people who know our God. Mm -hmm. We're the ones who's supposed to take responsibility to love our neighbors and, and do the right things for them. So I know I'm whistling into the wind. <laughs> There's no way any of this is going to change in Tucum Carry, but... But it's certainly not going to change if Christians go along with, sure, let's have the government do whatever it wants to do. Yeah. Well, and that's just, uh, it's easy, but it, it's taking away opportunities from you. Yeah, if you let the government take care of somebody in need, that's not you doing it anymore. That's not you serving people for the sake of Christ. Mm -hmm. It's you paying somebody else to 
so that you don't have to get your hands dirty and, and that kind of thing. Oh, we have another headline that I was going to mention, but this discussion reminded me of it. The election that just happened in Quay County, mm-hmm. every single ballot initiative passed, including the bond issues, yeah. and they passed big time. Really? Yeah. They weren't even close to not passing. Mm. And you know why? Because they were for great things like libraries and the <laughs> hospital. I'm all for libraries. I'm all for the hospital. But I'm not for you voting to take money away from your neighbor in order to pay for things that you think are good. That's called theft. Mm. If I go to somebody's door with a gun and demand five dollars from you so that i can donate it to the library that's theft yeah and if i pay somebody in a uniform and a badge to go and do the same thing that's still theft and it doesn't it doesn't matter how good the cause is yeah if god if god says thou shalt not steal and that is what he says (laughs) if god says that then government isn't allowed to steal either yeah. And for 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 voters to cast their vote in favor of stealing money from all of their fellow citizens. That's a culture of theft. And uh these are things that need to be reversed and these are things that we need to repent of as Christian citizens. Too many of us have been okay with just voting for bad things to be done to our neighbors because in the end, we think it'll work out good. Yeah. All right. Now that I'm, my blood pressure is reaching <laughs> the limit. <laughs> uh. And so let me give those Bible verses again. I think these are just two sections out of the whole scripture that teach these sorts of things pretty pr- plainly. Deuteronomy chapter 17, and especially the last half dozen or so verses where it where it mentions restricting the activities of the king. Mm-hmm. And then also in Revelation chapter, or uh, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 7, where it says that the governor is the deacon, the servant of God, mm-hmm. which means he's supposed to enforce whose rules? Not his own. He's a servant. He's yeah. enforcing the, the the rules of the one that he reports to. And I think this is the consistent teaching throughout the scripture. It doesn't say that Jesus is Lord over all things except politics or that <laughs> God is the king over all things except the kings. Yeah, He's Lord of lords and king over all the kings. Yeah. And so uh, this is very important for us to get a hold of. And for a long time, Christians have been taught to uh, ignore politics, set them aside because they don't have anything to do with the gospel. And, mm-hmm. and so here we are facing a government beast at really all levels that has completely overstepped its boundaries and really threatens to eat up everything. And you've got Christians cheering it along. So go look at those things. And thank you all for listening. Until next time on the Tucumcari, New Mexico area news podcast. <laughs> go and do all things for Christ. Amen. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. See you next time. Maybe, Maybe before then. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye. We hope this episode of the Tucumcari, New Mexico Area News has been a blessing to you. Remember to like our page on Facebook to stay current on what's happening in Quake County. We are honored to be a part of the Reconstructionist Radio Podcast Network. Either Christ is Lord of all, or He's not Lord at all. <laughs> <laughs>